Okay, we're going to define now something that we'll use again and again in, in subsequent chapters. We'll, we'll spend um, oh, six or eight chapters talking about electro electromagnetism and its various forms. The electric field is very similar to the gravitational field that you're already familiar with. Gravitational field, is, a field in physics means that everywhere in space there's a vector that points in the direction of that field. So if you're thinking about the gravitational field, I could look at this point in space and ask about the dire direction of the, of the gravitational acceleration. And you say, well, gravity accelerates things downward. G, little g. And, and you're absolutely right. So at this point in space, the gravitational field points down. At this point in space, gravitational field points down. But if you expand your vision and you say, well, what does a gravitational field look like around the Earth? Well, if you look over on this side of the Earth, it points this way. If you look on this side, it points that way. So that's a field that actually uh, has a well-defined direction and magnitude at every point in space. That's what we mean by field. So we'll define the electric field. Very useful concept. Uh, then we'll state the force on a charge placed in an electric field and then apply Coulomb's law um, to derive the, the field at a distance r away from point charge q, which will look a lot similar to the gravitational field around the Earth. All right, first define the electric field. This is just a definition. Can't argue with the definition. The electric field at a point in space is the electric, electrostatic force on a test charge located at that point in space. The test charge we're going to denote Q naught. That's our test charge. We're going to just place that test charge at a point in space where we're interested in the electric field. And then we're going to divide by that charge itself. So it's the electrostatic force of all of the objects at, at that, uh, the Coulomb's law of forces of all of the charges around on that test charge located at that point in space where we're interested in the field. So let me. Uh, so we're talking about here putting a charge Q naught here, and we might have some, um, let's say this is the net force, like what we calculated in the last example in the last section, where we had um, uh, three charges, one here, one here, and one here, and we found the net, net force on it. We're talking about the net force here. So let's say that that's this net electrostatic force on it. The electric field at, at that location is uh, given by that force divided by that charge, and that gives the electric field at this place. All right, so to find the magnitude of the electric field, we can just take the magnitude of this vector E equals the magnitude of the vector F, which we denote just with an F without an arrow. It's how we normally denote a magnitude of a vector. It's the, it's the amount of that vector. Divided by the magnitude of the charge, which is the absolute value of the charge. So that gives the magnitude of the, of the electric field. But we're actually interested not in the only in the um, magnitude of the electric field, but also the direction of the electric field. What's the direction of that field? The answer is hidden in our discussion in the very first chapter where we talked about vector calculus, a vector algebra. If you have a vector f, so here's a Here's my vector f, and it points up and toward the right. And I want to know, I want to divide that vector by a number. And I want to know what the resultant vector, uh, what the direction of E is. E is the 
force divided by a charge. Let's say the charge is positive. If that charge is positive, I'm dividing this vector by a positive number. Well, dividing by a positive number is the same as multiplying by 1 over that number. And when we multiply a vector by a positive number, we get a vector that's in the same direction as the original vector. So if the charge is positive, that electric field will be in the same direction as the force on that test chart. That's an important point, and we'll see it again and again. So the, um, and that's, it's stated right here, the direction is the direction of the force on a positive test charge. If the test charge had been negative, what would have happened? So there's our test charge, and it's now negative. Here's the direction of the force on that test charge. What's the direction of the electric field located at that test charge? Well, it follows from the same equation here. The force is still up and to the right. I'm dividing it now by a negative number. Well, dividing by a negative number is the same as multiplying by negative 1 over that number. So it's the same as multiplying by a negative number, too. And if you multiply a vector by a negative number, you get a vector in the opposite direction. So in that case, the electric field and the force are in opposite directions. So I always just remember it, uh, that the direction, uh, this is the direction of the electric field is the direction of the force on a positive test charge. So that's it. Um, State the force on a charge placed in an electric field. Now this is basically the same idea, except we're, we're going to ask about the force when we place a particle in an electric field. It's like thinking about the force, the gravitational force, of a mass that you place in a gravitational field. And you say, well, I know what that is. It's a force of gravity. It's a mass times the acceleration of gravity. And that's what we're talking about here. In fact, the analogy here is that this looks like F equals mg. G here is the gravitational field, gravitational acceleration. Mass here is the mass. Now, here, this is the electric field. And charge is the equivalent of the mass for the gravitational field. So how do we get here? Well, we got to here from the very last concept where we said that the electric field is divided by is the force divided by the test charge. Multiply both sides by the test charge. The test charges cancel on this side, which says that the force is Q times E. The charge itself times the electric field gives the force on that charge. It's just the last concept reversed. So the direction of the force is in the direction of the electric field if the charge is positive. Same thing we talked about last time. And is opposite the direction of the electric field if the charge is negative. Exactly what we talked about last time. So for an example, the charge is on the two metal spheres and the ebonite rod. So this is a metal sphere, uh, two metal spheres, one here and one here. Create an electric field at the spot indicated. So that's in this red arrow denotes the electric, the total electric field created by these two sources. Let's first ask. Um, um, well, let's just take that as a given. Uh, that's the direction of the field created. The field is a magnitude of two newtons per coulomb, and we actually didn't talk about that. Um, the units. The electric field is measured in units of newtons per coulomb. How do you know that? Well, it's easy. This comes out of that equation. Here's the electric field. What units are force me is force measured in? Newtons. And what units is charge measured in? Coulombs. 
So the electric field must therefore be measured in units of newtons per coulomb. So and we're given here in this problem that the uh, field has a magnitude of 2 newtons per coulomb and we're supposed to find the force on the charges in case A and in case B. So in case A, this one here, the charge is positive. Well, you say, well, I know the direction of that force. If the charge is positive, then the force and the electric field have to be in the same direction. So you're halfway there, and you're absolutely right. That the force is in the direction of the electric field. And, and if we want to actually find the magnitude of the force, we take Q, magnitude, absolute value of the charge, and then multiply it by E. So that'll be 18 times 10 to the minus 8 coulombs. That's the absolute value of the charge times the electric field, which is 2 newtons per coulomb. So that gives us the magnitude of the force. This coulomb kills the coulomb in the denominator, and we'll get an answer in newtons. All we have to do is multiply 18 by 2. No big deal. So that's 36 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons. So that'll be the force uh, in case A. What about case B? Well, case B, this one here, I've got a negative charge. You can barely see it now. It's a negative 24 times 10 to the minus 8. And you say, well, okay, it's a negative charge. That means that the electric field and the force have to be in opposite directions. And you're absolutely right. We're told, we're given this as the direction of the electric field. And we're now interested in knowing the direction and magnitude of the force. Well, we know it's in the opposite direction, and its magnitude calculated in exactly the same way as we did before. The absolute value of the charge, 24 times 10 to the minus 8 coulombs. The electric field is given to be 2 newtons per coulomb. Coulombs cancel. We get an answer in newtons. 24 times 2 is just 48. Times 10 to the minus 8 newtons. That's case B. That's how you work those kind of problems. Uh, positively charged object is released from rest in a region containing a uniform electric field. Which of the following statements concerning the subsequent motion of the object is co correct? So what do we mean by uniform? Uniform means constant in space. So this is a uniform electric field. It means it's the same everywhere. in space. That's what we mean by uniform. If you put your pen down here, it'll be 2 newtons per coulomb to the right. If you put your pen down here, it'll be 2 newtons per coulomb to the right. Everywhere it's the same. It's like the gravitational field near the Earth's surface here. If you don't look at the curvature and getting far away from where we are, everywhere the gravitational field, everywhere you put your fingers, that gravitational field will be 9.8 meters per second squared down. And so that's what we mean by uniform when the following statements blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, so what happens if uh, a positively charged object is released from rest in this region? So here's my positively charged object. And I want to know what happens to it. Um, well, first of all, you tell me the direction of the force on that positively charged particle if the electric field is, is to the right. And you say, well, hey, I know that one, Dr. Edwards. We just talked about it. Uh, if, the if, the for if the charge is positive, then the force and the electric field are both in the same directions. 
So the force will be in the same direction as the electric field. Happy day. So there's a force on this, on this mass. Let's say it has a charge of Q and a mass of M. Well, you know enough physics now to say, well, hang on, I know how to deal with this problem because I can write down that the net force on this object in the x direction is the mass times acceleration in the x direction. If we choose the x direction to the right, then, and if there's only one force on it, say we don't have any gravity, say the only force acting on it is this um, force of the electric field acting on it, then we'll just have um, QE is the force of the electric field. That's the last concept we just barely covered. If you place a, a charge in an electric field, then the force acting on that charge is Q times E. And that's equal to the mass times acceleration. So it will actually accelerate in the x direction, in the same direction as the electric field and the force. And its acceleration will be QE divided by the mass. So let's see which of these answers makes sense. Object will remi remain motionless? No, I don't think so. The object will accelerate to some constant speed and move in the direction of the electric field. I don't think so. Unless there's some retarding force, that thing is going to continue to accelerate. Um, so that one doesn't work. The object will accelerate to some constant speed and move in a direction opposite to that of the field. Well, that can't be true because we know it has the forces in the direction of the electric field. The object will experience a constant acceleration and move in the direction of the electric field. And that's the one that we're looking for. And there's a couple of problems that give you some uh, practice on that. And the opposite, and that doesn't work here. Okay. Consider the drawing where solid lines with arrows represent the electric field due to the charged object. An electron is placed at the point P and released at rest. So these represent electric field lines, and we'll talk more about these in the next section. We place a, an electron at point P, so it's a negative charge and we release it from rest. Which of the following vectors represents the direction of the force, if any, on the electron? Well, to know the direction of the force, we first need to know the direction of the electric field. What is the direction of the electric field? Well, we're told it's coming out from this green object. So at point P, the electric field is in this direction, away from the green object. We know that the charge is negative. And then you can fill in the blank to say, what is the direction of the force on this negative charge if the electric field is in that direction? You say, I know the answer to that. It's opposite. So the force must therefore be opposite to it based on what we just discussed. So the force has to be down and to the left. So we're going to be looking at a force that looks like that.